you know, we're talking about improving patient care and education, and you know, I'm not sure about in Scotland or globally, but in the U.S., there are a lot of fears and myths around participating in clinical trials. Um, you know, what would you most like patients to know if they're considering participating in a clinical trial and maybe have a little bit of trepidation about that? Yeah. I think the first thing is it's their choice. Mm -hmm. And they should feel in control of that. And I think that's an important finding. And if, so if they feel that they don't, then that's okay. Mm -hmm. That's their right. They come to us as physicians to be treated and not to be in clinical trials per se. On the other hand, um, many patients find that by participating, that they feel as though it's a positive experience for them. Mm -hmm. And so that's something you know, useful, I think. From the point of view of um, moving treatment forward, then I think it's hugely important. And again, if patients feel they can contribute to that, then that's maybe something that gives them a positive um, uh, view on, on this. I think the final thing is that for many people who've been in trials and tried new trials, they have got a treatment which has now become standard of care. Mm -hmm. And so they've had access to that and to improvements. And there's now many uh, studies have shown that patients who participate in trials often do better, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so again, patients might want to think, think about that. But at the end of the day, as I said at the beginning, it's for patients to decide that there um, and, and, and then make their own decision. Mm. But for example, the trial we're talking about, the patients who participated here, half of them had to be in one arm and half in the other. The, the half in the standard arm get what would have been the treatment anyway, but the other half of, and have now benefited. As I say, what we've shown is that this drug gives um, an improved efficacy and the patients in that half of the arm benefited. Mm -hmm. It looks as though they've got the new standard of, what will become the new standard of care earlier. Mm -hmm. They've got a 20% benefit in terms of their disease control. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that they have possibly for themselves be able to see what I participated and help bring this new treatment through. And so I think for patients that may be um, a way of them looking at this, but fundamentally they should make the decision. It will be very exciting, I'm sure, to see um, this treatment become the standard of care through your work. Um, and this is a very exciting time in general, I think, in cancer care. We're hearing mm -hmm. about all of these really new innovative therapies, targeted therapies, precision medicine. Mm -hmm. It seems like this field is just exploding. In your opinion, what do you think has been the catalyst for all of this new innovation in cancer care? I think the fact that we still were seeing significant numbers of women dying, mm -hmm. you know, and I think despite the advances that we've made, um, breast cancer until recently was lung cancer overtaking it, and breast cancer was still the, the largest cause of mortality among women from cancer cause, mm -hmm. and that was just not acceptable to patients or to, to researchers, um, and so I think there's been a, a you know, a drive to see improved treatments, to improve the disease control, to give women longer survival, um, and better quality of care. And I think those are the, are the main drivers. For a doctor, I think that has to be your main driver, is that um, you want to give your patients better care, you want to give them a longer disease control, and you want to, if possible, um, lengthen their survival. Mm -hmm. And um, that's, for myself, with this drug, it's one of the things I think over the years we've seen, which is that this is actually the only endocrine therapy, and in this it's unique actually, this is the only endocrine therapy where you've seen an improvement in both disease control on treatment, as well as a survival benefit that goes alongside that. And I think that's what doctors are looking for, they're looking to give patients longer duration of control, mm -hmm. less side effects, and in that better quality of life. Yes. Well, Dr. Robertson, thank you so much for coming in and sharing with us these really exciting results of your Phase 3 Falcon study. Thank you very much.